Today I'm sharing some acrylic painting tips. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. One of the more common struggles I hear from artists working in acrylics is in color mixing, color matching, getting the perfect color. I'm gonna share with you some tips on that today and how to get the most out of your acrylic paints. For those of you who are members over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you guys have the real-time version of this demonstration if you wanted to follow along. One of the things that you'll notice when I paint with acrylics is that I do not draw my subject out on the canvas and then paint around it. Watch how I layer this so that the entire background is painted like the elephants aren't even there yet, and then I will draw them in. The reason for that is, look how smooth this is. If I were to try to paint around those elephants, that would not come out so smooth at all. So I've gone ahead after that dried, I went and drew everything out with a water soluble graphite pencil. Normally I use a white charcoal pencil, but given how light this is, that wasn't going to show up. So the reason that I used a water soluble graphite is that when I go and paint over it, those lines will work out. If you use a regular graphite pencil, you're really not going to completely cover those lines. You, if you go dark enough, you won't notice them as much, but they always kind of peek through. So I don't like using regular graphite at any point on my acrylic paintings. I'm using an airbrush here to get that nice, soft, out of focus background. And then once that's in, I can come through with some traditional brushwork. This is a Fredericks Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas. Just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They were already the only canvas I used, so no difference there. But they did provide me with this canvas that I'm using in this video. This is a really, really smooth canvas. When you're trying to blend like this, whether it be with the airbrush or going over it like I am here with the traditional brushwork, ideally you want a really smooth canvas. It's gonna be easier to get that soft, smooth blending and to get the fine details once we get onto that, the elephants in this case. Now notice how few colors I am using in this painting. I've got my brown tones, just that tan, and black and white, that's really it. If you are somebody who is struggling with color, my biggest tip for you is use less colors as you learn to blend. So if you've got this nice set with almost 50 different colors, don't try to use them all in the same painting, use less. So here, three colors. I'm using, I wanna say it's burnt sienna, could be, red oxide, I can make it work either way. I've got some unbleached titanium white, titanium white and black, that's it. That's all this painting needed. Start with fewer colors, get comfortable with your values, and then start introducing additional colors as you continue to paint. But even if that sounds kind of boring to you, limit yourself to maybe five or six colors. Instead of trying to use three different yellows and four different purples, limit yourself and learn to blend from a smaller selection of colors. You will learn blending your and mixing color. You'll learn a lot more much faster. The other bonus with using the limited color palette is that everything is pretty much guaranteed to look good. It's going to go together. You know that when you mixed the, the blue you were already using in your sky along with one yellow, you're going to get a perfect green that will go seamlessly or blend seamlessly with the rest of your painting. So you're more likely to have that harmony with your colors if you are using fewer colors. If you use tons of different greens, that can look good, but sometimes it can be a little bit too too much, a little too crazy. So less colors is my biggest tip that I have for you today when you're learning to paint. And here you can go as few as three. I mean, it's my white. I guess technically you could go four because I've got unbleached titanium white along with, with titanium white, but I've got those, my red ox, or I think that was burnt sienna I said, and black. That's it. That's all you need. Focus on the values. Are your lights light enough, your darks dark enough? That's what's gonna make a difference in whether or not your work looks realistic. Now really quick, if this is moving way too fast for you, check out Patreon for as little as $4 a month. You get access to all of my longer videos. I have over 300, I know the screen says 200, but it's actually 300 at this point that you can start watching immediately when you sign up. I have a link in the video description and I've also got a link to the Patreon video library. So if you want to see what type of videos are there, check that out. Back to our regularly scheduled program. So here I'm starting to create some detail in the skin and you can really see why it was important for me to have a very, very smooth canvas. Look at those thin, thin lines. So I start creating the hint of wrinkles. I'm not gonna sit there on something this size and make every wrinkle exact to my reference photo. This reference photo, by the way, came from wildlifereferencephotos.com. So if you wanted to, to paint these specific elephants, you can pick that up there. This is, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Just letting you guys know. So this one, as I 
put in these wrinkles. I just need to make sure that these creases and wrinkles are going about the right direction. I don't need them exact to my reference photo, but I do need to make sure they're curving in the right direction. They're, they're about the right length, about the right width. So it's very similar to how I, I paint fur in animals where I get those clumps and clusters of fur. They're not all exact to my reference photo. I just need them to be close. Now, the bigger deal on this, besides getting that hint of wrinkles, is building up my values. Again, going back to colors, not that big of a deal. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. That is what is going to make a difference in your work looking realistic. It's not really the color. I can paint this whole thing. I could have switched out my burnt sienna for purple and it would have looked realistic. It just would have looked like a night scene. It would have changed the lighting, but you can switch that color out for pretty much anything and still have it look realistic just that those elephants are under different lighting as long as your values are correct. You can see on this baby how I've got the wrinkles again, those creases, how they will, it's almost a cross hatching. The, the brush that I'm using when I create those, you can use a liner brush, but a lot of what I'm doing here is a synthetic hog haired flat brush. And so by holding it to the side, I'm able to get a really nice thin line. You don't wanna push very hard. Remember with any brush you're using, the harder you push, the thicker your line is going to come out. So these are all thinned down with water. All the paints always are when I, I work. I thin them down with water. Not so much that they run or drip or anything like that, but enough that I get a smooth line. And then I'm holding that, that flat brush to the side to get those smooth lines. Now, if your brush is starting to fray, if it's not, if it doesn't look brand new, then that technique's not gonna work. I would go ahead and use a liner brush or a round brush in that case. But if your brush is in really good condition, holding a flat brush to the side can give you great tiny little lines. Now I'm coming through with a liner brush and getting some of those tinier details. I'm not really putting too many in here. I'm focusing more on my values than anything else, but I do wanna get some more details than what I currently had. Now that brown tone that I'm getting, that is from mixing my burnt sienna with my Mars black. And I go with Mars black, not ivory black. The Mars black is going to be more opaque. The ivory black is a very translucent, almost a warmer looking black, kind of has a brown tint to it, but it's very, very translucent. That can be great for shading and different things, but if you want a really true dark black, go with the Mars black. You can see how I just keep building up those shadows, work on those values, get those darks darker. And that can feel scary. So one of the things that you can do if you are afraid to get your darks too dark is take a photo of your work when you get to the point where you think you're about done, put it in, just use your cell phone and adjust the values, adjust your contrast. If you hype up, push that contrast up a bit, look at how much better your work will almost always look when the contrast is higher. Now, I'm not saying edit the photo and then post that online and pretend that's what your artwork looked like. No, buyers will not be happy when they get the original artwork. Instead, then take that photo where you've edited it and use that as your new reference photo. So you can see where you want to make things way darker. It'll make you much more brave in hyping up that contrast because I know making your, your light's so light and your dark's really dark, that can be scary. It feels safer to keep everything mid-range. But when you see what it looks like when you've edited that photo, I can't say that right, edited it? I, that, that's not how that comes out right. But anyway, once you've edited it, it will look so much better and then you'll be brave enough to go ahead and make those changes in your artwork, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Now I'm coming through and better defining some of these wrinkles. So the wrinkles are not just dark lines. I'm going back over them and pulling highlights where the light would be catching and this helps it to look more three-dimensional. So you can see I've got some lights and some darks in there on those wrinkles. And I'm not just putting new highlights. When I, when I put the light areas in there, I'm not inventing new lines. I'm putting highlights on the lines that are already there. This is a really tiny area, so I'll switch to the liner brush for these. And the same thing that I did on the mom, I'm just really hyping up that contrast. Get those darks really dark, get the lights really light. Now, I like to start with that mid-range that you can see where the baby elephant is now, but watch what happens as we start pulling in those brighter highlights and those darker shadows. Suddenly, he's going to go from looking flat to being more three-dimensional. So it doesn't matter how perfect your line drawing is, if you don't get your values correct, your subject is going to be very flat. Not to mention, kind of boring to look at. 
if you want to get somebody's attention, if you're going to an art show or an art gallery and you're displaying your work and you really want your work to grab the viewer's attention, which we all do, get your contrast in there. The contrast, the high contrast paintings, if you ever go to an art show, notice what the average customer, client, viewer, I don't know what you want to call them, looks at. Which paintings do they stop and really look twice at? It's always the ones that have higher contrast between the lights and the darks. It just draws attention there. Bright colors can also do it too, especially if you've got a lot of, of colors that are complementing each other, but high contrast still. So I've got some highlights in here. And I will still come through and get some of those darker values in. Now I've used the airbrush to create that foggy, misty look. Another tip that, or trick that you can do to create that is just to glaze white, titanium white. You can play with some, some transparent mixing white. Play with that to get some of the fog. That will help as well. It's not that it will be exactly like the airbrush. The airbrush it has a very unique look, but you can still get that feeling of fog by glazing. You so thin your paint down with a bit of water, and especially with your, your more opaque titanium white. One of the reasons we don't use titanium white when we glaze is it's too opaque, but it also will make things look foggy. Well, in this case, we want foggy. So thinning that down with some water and then wiping that over the areas you want to look foggy can give you a really good alternative to using the airbrush if you don't have one. So there is my finished painting. Very minimal color palette, but also very striking in that I, I kept my darks really dark and those lights really light. It's always all about the values. Well, maybe not always. It's most of the time about the values. As I was editing this video, my Vista print order came. Let's see what is in the box. Looks like we've got a ton of envelopes. Look how dirty that is. My gosh, I'm not sending that one out. Next, we just have a box of printed envelopes. That actually looks pretty with the address. And on the front, even better on these ones. These are the ones that'll be going out for the Patreon, the highest tier. You guys have glitch on the front. I'm actually pretty happy with how these printed. Next, we have business cards. And I feel that if you're going to print something wrong, you should or probably just go ahead and order 1,500 of them. I'm a genius. I'll show you what I did wrong, hold on. Oh, they look nice though. I should actually get that on camera. There we go. So there is, and the lighting's kind of terrible here, but we've got La Cree Fine Art. And in the back, I've got my YouTube channel, I've got my MeWe info, my what I am, marine and wildlife artist, and then Lisa at lawcree.com. You notice what's missing? My website. So what I'm gonna have to do is just as I give these out to people, point out like, there it is, that's the website right there. And I'll say these printed horribly dark. Here are the September, no, these are October's cards, the greeting cards that those of you on the highest tier for Patreon will get. There's the back. Here is the colored pencil cheetah. This printed so well. The lighter things print really well with Vista print. It's always the dark things I have trouble with. But yeah, I'm that is nice thick cardstock. It's beautiful. That is another greeting card. Oh, it printed so well. I'm really excited about this. So that's another one for future signups on the highest tier for Patreon. Here are the November postcards. We've got the orangutan. That actually, even though it's a dark painting, I lightened it up a lot, um, knowing that these tend to print way too dark. It printed really well. I am super happy with how these came out. Oh, here are the September postcards. I'll be working on these this week. That printed really, oh my gosh, that is, I'm quite impressed with the print job on these ones. So those of you who are waiting for your September cards, I will be starting those this week. They probably won't get shipped until next week. I still gotta get stamps for those. Oh, another one printed really well. And then last, we've got the elephants from today's painting. This will be the October postcards. So those will be going out next month. Have you subscribed yet? If not, there's a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube may or may not notify you if new videos go up. So also click on the bell notification because they're more likely to no notify you then. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's just sad.